Abigail has not been going to parenting time for quite some time. Now their son, Ben, is refusing to go as well. Uh, at this point, she continues to deny the parenting time to my client. Most recent denial occurred as recent as last week. We're asking for her to be held in contempt as this is uh, a refusal to follow recommendations of Ms. Katz. She's not trying to um, show any effort to be in his life or um, at this point, I just feel she's a danger. I have videos of her coaching the kids and whatever else. So she's done nothing but cause problems. There was an order previously that Ms. Parr would pay 100% of the bill, but she never did. The son is absolutely a terrified of his father. He doesn't want to talk to his father, doesn't want to see his father, doesn't want to be with his father. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to show cause, Ms. Henderson. Thank you, Your Honor. Unfortunately, this is defendant's fifth motion to show cause. Um, I would um, ask the court to remind plaintiff she still has an outstanding warrant for failing to attend the previous hearing. Uh, at this point, she continues to deny the parenting time to my client. Most recent denial occurred as recent as last week. At this point, we're asking for the court to schedule another in-person evidentiary hearing to which the plaintiff should bring the child, um, and the child would be in a conference room with an adult during the hearing. Otherwise, my client is not going to get the child. We're asking for her to be held in contempt. Uh, we're asking for the bench warrant that is currently out for Ms. Coolidge's arrest to be modified, to be extraditable. Um, for court's information, my client is in the process of domesticating the orders of this court in Indiana, but it does take some time, unfortunately, and uh, Ms. Coolidge continues to deny him parenting time. We're asking for makeup parenting time of uh, six overnights and eight days. We're asking for attorney's fees, Your Honor. At this time, uh, plaintiff has not made any payments on the fees she's already been ordered to pay. So in lieu of receiving the payment, we're asking that my client get credit for a total amount that has been ordered for Ms. Coolidge to pay, as well as the current attorney's fees and to set it against any child support obligation that my client would have. Otherwise, he will never get paid by plaintiff. Um, we're asking for in-person evidentiary hearing to address all of those issues, and we're asking that the child be presented for that hearing. Thank you. Mr. Bland, uh, are you contesting the matter so you believe we need an evidentiary hearing? Your Honor, we are, we are disputing those matters. Okay. In that case, the court will hold an evidentiary hearing. The court will do that again in person. The uh, In this case, the plaintiff will have to be present for that. And uh, the court will order that she bring the child as well to that uh, particular uh, hearing so that the child's available to the court. Judge, I, I would note at least that she wanted me to indicate that coming to Michigan is a hardship for her. Mr. Bland, I don't care what her hardship is or problem. We've addressed that. She'll appear or otherwise we will have her extradited and put in jail. That's her choice. I'm not trying to quarrel with you, Your Honor, just indicating. I understand. I understand. I'm just telling you. I have my client. I understand. I, I'm just telling you what's going to happen or otherwise she'll find herself in jail. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You. Would the court like me to prepare that order or will the court be sending the notice with the date? We'll we'll be in touch with both your offices and set up a time when, when you're available. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, have a good day. Thank you. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to hold plaintiff in contempt uh, and request access to uh, various passcodes. Uh, Ms. Henderson, did you get the answer in this matter in which she stated she had uh, provided those passcodes? We did, Your Honor. Unfortunately, the children's phones have two sets of passcode. One is to actually unlock the phone, and the second one is to the parental controls. Um, that issue has been followed up on with Ms. Jaswiak upon having received the initial passcodes. Ms. Meredessa Katz also weighed in on that issue on Friday, stating that both parents must have access to those parental controls as they need to monitor the screen time, the 
apps and websites that the children visit. And it's not just the parents, right? It's their obligation to monitor that. Uh, Ms. Joswick vehemently um, refuses to produce those passcodes. She states that um, Ryan can get the children their own devices to use at his home or that he has to pay one half of the bill. Um, and uh, again, Ms. Meredith Katz weighed in on this stating that it does not matter who pays for the phone. It matters that both parents have equal access to the parental controls and that they're able to monitor the screen time limits and, and things of that nature. Um, Ms. Joswick is receiving child support that can be used to pay the bill. Um, it's not an issue of who pays the bill. It's an issue of each parent has the right to access that. And it should be noted to the court that the children are currently spending more time at Mr. Joswick's home due to him exercising the makeup parenting time he's been granted. So it's absolutely fundamental that he has access to those passcodes because Ms. Joswick vehemently opposes providing those. We're asking for her to be held in contempt as this is uh, a refusal to follow recommendations of Ms. Katz that both parties are to follow pursuant to a court order, and we're asking for attorney's fees in this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Jaswick, uh, you're muted. You'll have to unmute and then uh, respond. July 26th was the last time I had any contact with Meredessa Katz. Um, she has not involved me in any of the meetings, any conversations. I knew nothing about a conversation pertaining to the kids' cell phones. Um, I received an email September 6th telling me that I needed to hand over the pass codes. Um, and at the end of the email, uh, Meredessa clearly states, if you have any questions to reach out to her, I did. I responded that day with an email asking several questions about my children's safety concerns, if anything had taken place that I should be aware of as to why Ryan needed the passcodes to the phones. I don't believe it's for good intentions. I believe it's to read conversations between me and my children. Um, however, I never received any answers to any of my questions. Um, it was kind of passed to the side. And I complied anyway by giving him the passcodes to the phones. So he is able to enter the phones. He is able to see what they're doing. Uh, the kids do have downtime on their phone. They do have app limits. They do have contact limits. Communication safety is on. Content and privacy restrictions are on. Um, as far as the codes, not giving codes on the contact limits and app limits, um, those phones are linked to our Apple Cache and our iCloud. So I don't believe Ryan needs those passcodes. Um, I also think this would be a great opportunity for Ryan and I to co-parent by deciding the limits together and not Ryan putting limits at his house and then Chelsea changing the limits when they get to my home. That's something we should decide together. Um, I never refuse to give any codes. I simply ask questions I had no answers to. Um, and I'm not trying to undermine anything that Ryan's doing, but rather work together instead of running to Meridessa every time that there is an issue between us that involves the children, as I am no longer included in anything that is happening. Okay, well, I don't know where the breakdown was with Ms. Ms. Katz, if there was, but you have a right to request that. And obviously it's stated that the parties would continue counseling with Meridessa Katz and would follow the recommendations. And uh, I don't think that... Uh, Mr. Jaswiak's uh, request on having access to those phone is uh, is for any ulterior motive or anything other than for the, uh, again, the uh, supervision, monitoring of the children, which is important. Uh, so the court is going to order that all passcodes as necessary for him to monitor their phones. Uh, would in fact uh, be provided within seven days of today's date. And so they would have access to those. Uh, the court would at this point, I'm just gonna reserve on attorney fees uh, pending any further proceedings in this matter. And uh, with that, uh, anything else, Ms. Henderson? I don't believe so, Your Honor, thank you. 
Ms. Shazwiak, anything else? No. Okay. You're free to go. Have a good day. Court will note that this matter is before the court on the plaintiff's objection to referee order, as well as the motion for parenting time. Ms. McNiff, I know in reviewing the pleadings, you said that Ms. Wallace and Dr. Haugen did not testify. I didn't see any reason as to why they didn't testify. What, what was what Well, I, Your Honor, this case has been continued. We have a status conference that is upcoming. Uh, it's it, it, we've had a lot of hearings. I don't believe that we're quite finished as as of yet. Um, there have been so many issues involved and so many therapists involved that I, I think that we do need to continue the referee hearings. And I believe at the next status conference that that may very likely happen. However, in the meantime, this court entered the ex parte order that required Mr. Schmidt to stay 20 feet away from Ms. Galt during attempted parenting time exchanges. He's already violated that. We have a PPO hearing before Judge Yost Johnson coming up uh, at 11 o'clock this morning uh, as, as a result of his violations of Ms. Uh, Galt's personal space and his attempts to reach into her car in order to grab the child. At, at this point, the child, Abigail has not been going to parenting time for quite some time. now their son, Ben, is refusing to go as well. And he's become more and more afraid of his father as there has been police intervention. Mr. Schmidt has been inappropriate with the police, calling them. I, I, I'm aware of that. You put it, it in your motion. Yeah, so. I, I, he, he's, he's just been incredibly inappropriate and the escalation uh, has been significant. So I, I think we're going to need a reset with this case. If there's going to be even supervised parenting time, there needs to be uh, a, a, a trust building period for the child where he can be assured that dad won't yell at him, dad won't yell at mom, dad won't try to force him, uh, dad won't yell at police officers, he, dad won't swear. And so we're asking that there be a suspension of parenting time for now until we can get back in with referee Snyder and see if we can come to some kind of resolution where we can we can help Ben and Mr. Schmidt uh, to heal that relationship because it's it, it, it's definitely it, it was improving for a period of time and now with the recent conflict it's back to being as bad as it ever has been. Okay Mr. Schmidt what's your response? Um, I disagree with her motion. Um... Would you like me to go through the motion with you? Well, I, you can give me your uh, what your response is. I don't need to go oh. through it paragraph by paragraph, but you can respond. Okay. Yeah, her saying that I've been out of line with my son. Um, I showed up to a gas station to pick up my son, and two police officers are there because Miss Galt called them there. Um, they try to intervene and get in the way of me seeing my son. Um, I went there to pick him up. They did not let me see the, him, and then, since then she has made obscured, uh, you know, things that I say that I've done that aren't true. Um, I, I just disagree with everything. Okay. Well, it sounds like I guess uh, I'll ask Ms. Henderson. Do you have anything to add to this? Um, yes, Your Honor. I was able to speak with the minor children twice. In fact, the second meeting was requested by Ben. Um, and Ben has been very clear and adamant. Um, I could visibly see that he is distraught any time the topic of parenting time is being brought up. Um, his therapist has been pretty clear in her uh, recommendations that a reset is necessary uh, ben does appear very afraid of his father, and unfortunately, that is a step back from where we were uh, just months before this time. It, it does appear appropriate per the recommendations of his counselor to um, suspend parenting time, given the fact that it appears to be very harmful for Ben until such time that uh, more testimony can be taken at the status conference on November 15th, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, what the court's going to do is obviously court takes these matters very seriously. And there's uh, issues, apparently, because I've entered the 
ex parte, which would put some restrictions and try to, uh, again, to make this occur in a more smooth and uh, reasonable fashion. That apparently hasn't helped. What the court's going to do is you can talk to, when you talk to uh, referee Snyder at your status conference. When is that coming up, Ms. McNiff? November 15th. Okay. What the court's going to do is I am going to temporarily suspend parenting time and uh, order that uh, if you would have Mr. Uh, Snyder expedite that hearing, at which time you can present uh, Ms. Wallace and Dr. Haugen's testimony that allow the uh, referee to review, uh, again, the prior uh, testimony and transcripts, et cetera, in this particular matter and have a full understanding of what we need to do going forward. And uh, then we can enter an order at that time, but I would like it expedited so that we uh, can get this matter resolved because I don't like to uh, suspend parenting time unless I have to. Okay, Ms. McNiff, you can prepare that order. I will, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, you're free to go, have a good day. Your Honor, I apologize for interrupting. Is the court addressing the objection as well, or is that encompassed in the ruling? Because I know Mr. Well, it's encompassed if I've okay. suspended that kind of okay. Makes I just want to make sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. This matter is before the court upon the defendant's motion uh, for appointment of reintegration therapist. Uh, again, previously the court had ordered that the parties would go to the Avalon Behavioral Health, and it's now my understanding based on the motion that they do not do reintegration counseling. Is that correct, Ms. Pace, now? That is correct, Your Honor. I had a conversation with that office staff trying to set something up after my client was having some trouble getting records and setting an appointment, and they advised me that they do not do that type of therapy, um, and nobody in their office would be willing to help in that situation. Do you have a recommendation, Ms. Pazno, as to who, or do you have to find your Honor, there was actually three people I was going to give to the court. One is Margaret Hunter. I know the parties had used her in the past, but it didn't get very far. Um, Rebecca Walker, who is at Kamazoo Psychology, does reintegration counseling. And then there's a Kimberly Wistendorf Houghton Keeper um, out of the Hastings Battle Creek area. That's my understanding that she is able to do that as well. So I would ask the court order one of those three people. Okay. Mr. Spring, do you have a problem with uh, either of those three doing the uh, reintegration? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I um, I can't afford counseling right now, so uh, this isn't going to be covered by insurance. So um, there was an order previously that Ms. Parr would pay 100% of the bill, but she never did. So I was settled with, um, with the debt. Uh, I can't. I simply can't afford another bill right now. Okay. Ms. Paisno, is that accurate that uh, she was supposed to pay for this? Your Honor, I am not aware that she was supposed to pay <clears throat> for the counseling for the children. This court, when we entered the reintegration order, didn't specify who was required to pay. I'm not aware of an order previously, but it <clears throat> could have been before I was involved. There could be. There's been a lot of orders in this case. So Correct. if what the court will do, do you have a problem with uh, Ms. Walker, or Ms. Houghton Keeper, either one of those, Mr. Spring? Uh, yes, we tried with um, Hunter. Um, I didn't say Hunter. I didn't I didn't oh. mention her. Oh, I'm sorry. I mentioned uh, Ms. Walker, Ms. Houghton Keeper. I, I don't have a problem if it's uh, Ms. Parr and one of the children or two of the children, but um, a lot of the counselors do not like to do that. Again, that they're saying uh, they they saying they would do reintegration counseling, and so if they say that, we'll take them at their word. Uh, do you have a preference, Miss Paisno? Miss Walker apparently is closer. I mean, she's in Kalamazoo. Your Honor, I don't have a preference to either one. Why don't we try using Miss Walker, and uh, the court will reserve on the uh, again on the uh, payment of that. I think. There may have very well might have a vague recollection that uh, the court had previously ordered Ms. Parr to pay for that counseling. So uh, you might have to go back through the file and find that, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to reserve at that at this point because I think there was an order. 
You know, actually, you know, there is the defendant shall pay any costs associated with reunification counseling that's not covered by insurance. That's back from June 30th of 2023. Okay. Why don't you just, uh, in this order, just so Ms. Walker as well, is to reiterate that in this particular order, I would order that the parties would contact Ms. Walker's office within 30 days of today's date to start that reintegration. Thank you. Your Honor, and the other part of my motion was, it's my understanding that the minor child, um, Maria is not in counseling and only Lucy's in counseling um, with Avalon on behavioral health. And I would just ask that she be required to attend counseling for the previous orders as well. Well, the court, the court will order that. That's no problem. Uh, we'll do that and you can conclude that in your order. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. The rest, you're free to go. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to set aside the referee recommended order of August 13, 2024. Mr. Zhang. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. I will rely on my pleadings, uh, but I would like to point out that uh, it took a lot of courage for my client to, a lot of therapy for my client to start talking about the abuse she uh, observed or she endured from Mr. French and for the referee to um, use it uh, against her to punish her essentially for trying to speak up i think it's just set us a bad precedent for the future um it's discouraging the domestic violence victim from speaking up in the future furthermore neither party has asked for a uh changing legal custody um and, and it's in very inappropriate for the referee to um, essentially initiate a changing legal custody without uh, either party asking for it. Um, and third, uh, regarding the school issues, um, the, the the referee very much solely focused on just the academic records of a standardized testing. Um, and yeah, you know that shouldn't be the uh, end all be all of all evaluation when it comes to school Fam uh, whether you have family in the area matters whether uh your 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 you have um people who you're familiar with who went to a school who uh went to the school and who are familiar with the culture and with the community of the school matters too uh, also um and i i uh, it is roughly uh referee has erred in not considering that or minimizing the effect of those um, factors in making his decision. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bailey. <laughs> yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, regarding the pleadings, we're going to rely on referee Croteau's referee findings. We had three-day evidentiary hearing. We had witnesses. We had exhibits. We believe he did make correct findings. Regarding Mr. Zhang's allegations of credibility being a big issue in this case, they were, but they weren't the sole issue in this case. This didn't decide school district or custody alone, but credibility was a big part. And uh, Ms. French did not have any witnesses to corroborate her stories and her stories changed at multiple points of these proceedings. They were never brought before your attention at the divorce trial. They were brought up at a CPS investigation, and then the stories changed over time. Regarding legal custody, although legal custody was not requested to be changed in a pleading, Mr. French did make oral presentation at the referee hearing that if the court found fit, he would take sole legal custody of the minor child. And regarding the school, while academic records were presented as exhibits and Ms. French failed to provide any witnesses or any exhibits about Ellsworth schools, Mr. French also had an expert witness from Michigan State uh, from the preschool who was able to talk about the transition to Hazlitt schools for young kids, how the, the children get to have their instructor at Michigan State directly talk with the instructor at Hazlitt schools. And so it wasn't just academic records. It was transitions uh, for children from preschool to kindergarten. And it was about the other surrounding benefits of the Hazlitt area. So your honor, we don't necessarily have a right to object to uh, Ms. French requesting a, a de novo hearing, but we believe three days of evidentiary hearing um, in a very thorough record, very thorough transcript and very thorough findings uh, are satisfactory uh, for the custody parenting time in school districts of this minor child. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Zhang? Uh, yes, I'd just like to point out that the uh, expert I was spotting from the MSU preschool was uh, was not 
uh, she was not part of the Hassler School District, and she was a program that Mr. French unilaterally enrolled the minor child in, claiming to be a child care program, and later turns out to be a school district, or, or not a school district, but some sort of a <clears throat> some sort of a preschool program, um, and that was not consulted with my client, and that uh, and for Mr. French to be able to gain advantage by uh, bypassing the joint legal. Um, requirement before uh, the sole legal issue was changed, uh, I think it's just inappropriate. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Well, the court has reviewed the file thoroughly. I've reviewed the uh, referee's uh, finding as well. And obviously, the uh, defendant disagrees with the uh, referee, but that in and of itself does not establish error simply because you disagree. The <laughs> referee did find the plaintiff to be more credible. In this case, and credibility is always an issue, goes to a lot of the factual issues the referee uh, found and uh, that the plaintiff had presented uh, more compelling evidence than that of the defendant. And uh, that doesn't in any way attempt to minimize or, as Mr. Zhang says, punish her for coming forward. But the fact is, when you know, the referee is pre presented with more compelling evidence on one side. He has to consider that. And he did in this case. The court, when I review this, I do not find that the referee made a factual or legal error in this matter. And therefore, the court is going to uh, uh, deny the motion in this case. Mr. Bailey, you can do an order denying the motion submitted under seven day notice. Thanks. Thank you. You're Thanks. free to go. Have a good day. Court will note the appearance of Ms. McKenzie on behalf of the plaintiff, the defendant appearing in pro per. There are two motions, motion for order for family children's services to supervise uh, the parenting time and for plaintiff's motion to dismiss the uh, defendant's motion for custody. Ms. McKenzie. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm asking the court to regard these motions as unopposed because no answer has been filed. Well, I'm going to let her respond. Then I'll go forward. Thank you, Your Honor. With regard to the motion to dismiss the August 1st, 2024 motion regarding custody, uh, the Vodvarka standard was not met. I did attach a copy of Ms. Uh, Frederick's August 1st, 2024 uh, form motion regarding custody. And... Ms. McKenzie, who referred it to the referee for an evidentiary hearing? Did the court or was it referee? Um, I <laughs> think I think it was the referee, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I just I when I was reviewing this, I didn't have a recollection of the facts. So I'm thinking I my thought was I thought, well, I didn't refer it because I didn't recall the facts. Correct. Uh I I uh Re just recently got in on the case. There is a long history in this case, but in any, uh, I, I think that it was the referee uh, after he entered a temporary order uh, in July. Okay, go ahead. So, but I, I don't think that the uh, proper cause or or change of circumstance has been shown in the paperwork filed on August first, twenty twenty four, by Miss Frederick. Her, she's making allegations, but she did not explain in detail what has happened. And using uh, FOC Form 87 entitled Motion Regarding Custody, it requires in paragraph F, like Frank, 5, that a, a detailed explanation be given. That is simply, that wording is simply consistent with the requirement of Vodvarka that uh, something spell out what has happened since the entry of the last order to make it, uh, to entitle the defendant mother to uh, a, another evidentiary hearing. She's filed motions for custody in the past and uh, has, has failed to appear for her own motion for custody. So the problem is that Vadvarka not being met, and the standard also in 722.271C um, indicates the authority of the court, as the court is aware. Um, and in 7, 722.27, parent 1C, 
it indicates that the, the, a limitation or a, it gives the court a direction on when the court is able to amend or modify previous judgments. And it indicates that uh, a modification or amendment of a previous judgment or order has to be for proper cause shown or because of change of circumstance. That is the defendant's ticket into another evidentiary hearing. That has not been uh, properly pled. Von Varka's standard has not been met. And we're asking the court to uh, cancel the uh, evidentiary hearing now set in front of the referee for October 9th, 2024. Uh, regarding the defendant's August 1st, 2024 motion. We're asking the court to uh, cancel that and I will enter an order uh, rescinding that privilege because the Vodvarka standard has not been met. We're also asking for uh, attorney fees and costs, uh, $400 in relation to this, this, this single motion. Okay, well, a a argue the other motion as well and then I'll have uh, the Thank defendant respond. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, on July 19th, 2024, an order was entered giving uh, Ms. Frederick supervised parenting time. And the order provided that the supervisor be the plaintiff or the other, other designee. And because she has made false uh, CSC allegations against my client back in April, naturally and properly, he was um, uh, unwilling to be the supervisor but he has sent his designee. Uh, most often it has been his grandmother, Mary Hopkins, uh, Mrs. Mary Hopkins. And she has appeared for super to supervise the parenting time awarded in the July 19th, 2024 order. But the uh, in this particular matter on September 4th, we have multiple allegations of, of failure uh, of a, violation of the parenting time order, the July parenting time order by my client. However, when the time came on July, or excuse me, September 4th, uh, the defendant mother said that her grandmother was unavailable. She had made arrangements for her own grandmother to uh, go ahead and be the babysitter. And the, the grandmother mysteriously was uh, unavailable on September 4th. And so Ms. Frederick said, hey, my, my new boyfriend would be supervisor. So the plaintiff uh, father did allow this only for- Fly. Oh, Ms. Frederick, don't interrupt. You have a chance to speak. Later. I'm sorry, my child grabbed the phone. <laughs> Go ahead. Only, only for the reason that the referee had admonished the, the parties at the last referee hearing that both parties did need to comply with the order, the court's orders. But on September 4th, the defendant mother took videos of the children while she interviewed them and she was coaxing them to say derogatory uh, things about their father after the children returned home on September 4th. She And she uh, texted uh, the plaintiff father saying she was gonna quote unquote roast him with the videos. So September 7th, parenting time came, came around and uh, the plaintiff father sent his grandmother, Mrs. Mary Hopkins, as a supervisor and uh, Ms. Frederick re simply refused to allow uh, Grandma Hopkins to be, to be the supervisor. So no parenting time occurred. Defendant mother filed another uh, complaint for denial of parenting time. And she also indicated on that day uh, that uh, on September 11th that she was not gonna allow uh, either Mr. Mr. Hopkins, plaintiff uh, Warren Hopkins, to supervise, she wasn't gonna have any part of Mary Hopkins supervising either. And the fact that that she's not accepting the designee of the plaintiff uh, simply indicates that she she cannot operate within, within the parameters of the referee's order. So I'm suggesting that if parenting time is even to continue the best interests of the children, uh, two young, young boys require that uh, a neutral third party be be utilized and that would be family and children's services and i'm asking that because she is refusing appropriate adult supervisors who are familiar to the children uh that she be required to pay both use and pay for the the services of family and children's uh and that the exchange for the parenting time occur at 
Family and Children's Services. So I'm asking the court to enter an order uh, requiring the defendant mother to use and pay for Family and Children's Services, requiring the parties to make the exchange of the children ages four and six at Family and Children's Services, and granting uh, attorney fees and costs of another four hundred dollars to Mr. Hopkins. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So you have you have no pr problem with uh, Miss. Hopkins, if she continues, Miss McKenzie. But if Mary Hopkins continues as yeah. supervisor, not at all. No, okay. she is an appropriate supervisor, and and what is even better is is that she's known. She has contact all the time with the little ones. Okay, so she you. she is an appropriate supervisor, okay. and she is she is a sensible individual known to the children. Uh, okay, and thank you. My is my client's uh, relative. Well, one reason I ask is Family and Children Services has very limited uh, amount of ability to supervise, and it's very stilted when they do. So, correct. With that, Miss Frederick, uh, what's your response? My response is um, Mary Hopkins is not appropriate in my eyes. Um, we have family on my side that the children know very well, as much as they know. On okay, let, side. Let, let, let's um, just let's say she's not acceptable. Um, Mary, Tell us why. Okay, so back in 2021, or back in 2020, 2019, sorry, Mary and Warren Hopkins attacked me with my seven-month-old Jaden Hopkins, our child that we have in common, and my hands. Mary bit my hand um, trying to get me to drop my child. I made a police report. Still to this day, I have a scar on my hand from her biting my hand. Um. She coaches the kids to say certain things to me. They don't want to talk around me when she's around. They, she gives them the evil eye. She instigates with me, tries to cause arguments with me. Um, I, she's just not appropriate. She, it's just a game. It's just a game. I don't understand why Warren himself can't do it or one of my dozen knees. My boyfriend, I never said my boyfriend could supervise. I don't have a boyfriend. It was the third party that's a friend. My grandma wasn't able to get up in the truck. She had a doctor's appointment that day. My grandma is able from here on out. It was just that day she had a doctor's appointment, and I didn't know. But as far as Mary Hopkins, I have videos of her coaching the kids and whatever else. So she's done nothing but cause problems, and it's just not a good idea for her to supervise. Okay. Well, anything else, ma'am? No. Okay. Well, the court in the, in the prior order did state that the uh, that the uh, plaintiff could uh, again designate, as my understanding from the referee's order, uh, that either the defendant could supervise or the designee in this matter was that uh, the plaintiff's designee or the defendant's designee, Miss McKenzie. I, I'm reading that as Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins designee, Your Honor, because it's all in the same paragraph. Okay. What the court's going to do, the court will appoint uh, Mary Hopkins as the supervisor in this matter. Absolutely if, not. Well, ma'am, you don't have a choice. I'm ordering it. So you don't comply with it. You could end up in jail if you want to go that route. Just, so it's, it's your right. choice. It's your right. choice, ma'am. Uh, she, she just she disconnected from the, I'm not sure if she got, she's no longer on our hearing, in our hearing. Megan Frederick is no longer in the hearing. Okay. Court will note that it's 1020 and apparently she's disconnected. Um, the court is going to order that the designee would be Mary Hopkins. Uh, court is not going to, court will note that the, uh, fact finder, the referee had apparently made a preliminary determination that there was a proper cause or change in circumstances. I don't know what the referee was looking at at that uh, particular point, but the court's not going to intercede and, uh, uh, again, take away the referee's discretion in this matter. It may be at the future point, depending upon the outcome, that the court does have to review it as a result of de novo, but not at this point. So the court will allow the referee evidentiary hearing to proceed in this particular matter. And uh, the court will just simply reserve on cost at this time. And uh, you can prepare the order, uh, Ms. McKenzie. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Court will note that this matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to modify custody, parenting time, and support. Uh, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, um, <clears throat> is the is April joining us? She is. Okay. Um, uh, Your Honor, on uh, June tenth, uh, you awarded uh, plaintiff, um, and we agreed to let her have uh, supervised visits with our minor child, Keon. Uh, Miller. Um, since that time, uh, Ms. Keeler has um, participated in one visit um, and has not done any Wednesday visits. She has not reached out. I haven't got any phone calls to try to get uh, set up a time or to pick up or anything like that. So Are she's you? refusing. Sorry. She's refused basically to participate in these visits. Um, she has also, um, since the last court hearing, it uh, looks like she was has two driving while licenses suspended and one open case of uh, driving under the influence. So because Ms. Keeler has not participated in any visits and doesn't look to be appear to be um, going to any time in the near future, um, that with her... Uh, um, continued alcohol use and drinking and driving, we just don't feel it's necessary to have on record that she should have any kind of supervised visits or otherwise. Um, therefore, um, we'd ask that you uh, uh, remove those supervised visits um, from the order. Okay. How does the fact, and I can't say that if she's obviously incurred some additional uh, DUIs, that that won't have an impact, but if she has a supervisor, how does that impact the visits if there is in fact a supervisor well she's she's not she's not participating at all she hasn't reached out to participate she hasn't tried okay. to well if, if she doesn't participate then she forfeits the uh the parenting time so that that's her option i guess at that point yes and we all i mean we'd like to to have that on record um that the the order be changed i mean there um i don't want him looking over you know questioning oh is today going to be the day she tries to um, come and Because, you know, at this point, he doesn't want anything to do with her. I mean, she um, hasn't shown any effort. She's not uh, trying to she's not trying to um, show any effort to be in his life or um, at this point. I, I just feel she's a danger, you know, okay. to his well-being. Miss Keeler, what's your response? Um, that's not true, Your Honor. Um, I have reached out to my son. I don't reach out to the father at all. I have reached out to my son. I have seen him. I have talked to him. I have texted him. So that is not the case. And all the other drive-in white license are suspended. They've been thrown out. So all of that is irrelevant. And like you said, it is supervised. And every other weekend, a teenager does not want to sit at his grandparents' house all weekend. So there is complications with that sometimes. Um, there's also been football camp during my time where I'd allowed him to go to camp instead of coming spend time with me. So there are reasons why I am missing some of my time, but it's not because I want to miss out on my time with my son, Your Honor, at all. Okay. Well, the court had previously ordered a supervised parenting time. Uh, again, I don't know what the uh, particular issues the defendant has brought up, but uh, brought up some issues in that matter, but that would not impact supervised uh, parenting time as that there would be a proper supervisor. What the court will do in this matter is I'm going to deny the motion. There's not a basis to eliminate the supervised parenting time. Only thing I would do is order a Ms. Keeler, that when you do have the parenting time arranged, if you do talk to the child and arrange it, that you confirm that with the defendant so that he knows what's happening uh, in this matter, because you need to have that communication so that you would you would confirm with him when the parenting time is going to occur. And obviously that you'd have the supervisor present uh, for those particular visits and uh Mr. Miller, I'll let you do a order that simply states that uh, that she would uh, communicate to you when that uh, parenting time is going to occur. Sounds good, Your Honor. 
and you can submit that under what they call a seven day notice of entry. If there are no objections, then the order would be entered. So, okay. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. The matter is before the court on the defendant's motion for modification of domicile, modification of custody, parenting time support. Ms. Storm. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm sure the court's already read the motion. So briefly, um, we have a situation where we are locked in this repeating pattern with mother, where we have instability and inconsistency in the custody the custody issues regarding their minor child, specifically the child's mental health and other medical needs. There was an incident where mom refused to refill a prescription that was necessary for the child. The child then had withdrawals from that and it got so bad that the child had to be taken to the hospital and then she was kept an inpatient for a number of days. Um, this is a pattern by mother where things, as soon as things fall apart, she's, she's back on, she's promises are made, I'm going to change. And while the eyes are on her, like with a CPS investigation, she's great. But once the investigation or the eyes are off of her, she lapses back into instability and inconsistency. And this is having a negative impact on the party's child. Um, she has um, asked to live with her father. She knows that being with dad is going to be a more stable um, a place for her. My client has the ability to have the child live with him. He's been in a stable home for uh, quite some time now and is more than willing and able to ensure that the child's medical and educational needs are being met. Uh, so we would ask that the court consider our motion and likely set it for an evidentiary hearing. Okay. Well, we don't have the plaintiff. Do you know at all why the plaintiff isn't here, Ms. Storm? Uh, she had indicated to my client that um, she kept indicating that she didn't have notice for today's hearing, even though she had received all of the notices that I had sent prior as I had some scheduling difficulties. Um, and so having sent this in advance, she even confirmed via text with my client that she knew the hearing was for today. Um, I'm not sure why she's not here uh, or not um, participating in today's motion hearing. Okay. Well, the court isn't either. I just didn't know if you knew. And it is now uh, 10, 1029 a.m. It was set for 10 o'clock. Uh, I will allow you to proceed with an evidentiary hearing before the referee in this particular matter, I would state, uh, based upon my reading of the uh, the motion, however, that it's, it's a very it's very a weak motion at this particular point. But uh, there is enough there to proceed with the uh, evidentiary hearing, and hoping that the uh, uh, plaintiff would respond and give us some indication, but she hasn't. So allow you to proceed and we'll uh, we'll refer to the referee thank you your honor thank you thank you your honor court will note the appearance of mr robison on behalf of the plaintiff this matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to change custody mr robison <clears throat> thank you your honor um i think our pleadings pretty much set forth um <clears throat> our reasons for the necessity of a, an order of changing custody. Um, Mr. Shelley hasn't had any contact with his son in over a year as a result of uh, <clears throat> severe beating he gave his child. The son is absolutely a terrified of his father. He doesn't want to talk to his father, doesn't want to see his father, doesn't want to be with his father. Um, who was supposed to be on probation for another eight, nine months, but they terminated his probation early <clears throat> without notice to my client or to the boy. And what I'm asking the court to do is set this matter for a brief evidentiary hearing, perhaps parties only, so that <clears throat> we can get an order keeping him in place with his mother. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Shelley, uh, you're muted. You'll have to unmute, and then what's your response? Uh, my response is I was wanting to try to get a cheering ration adjournment so I can give me a counsel. Okay, I need uh, actually I need a counsel at this point. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is again I'll let Mr. Shelley have an opportunity to have attorney present. Uh, what we'll do is we'll adjourn the matter one week. So Mr. Shelley will come back in next week uh, at the same time. So you'll need to have an attorney present at that time. Okay. Okay. A week from today. Week from today. Correct. I don't really, uh, I, I was at the point. I don't really want, want the son to be in her custody either. She's sure. not supposed to have sure. him. Again, if I'm not yeah. going to let them argue stuff, I'm not going to let you argue. I'm adjourning okay. it right, one fine. week, one week to you get an attorney. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion uh, requesting additional time to present evidence. Uh, why, Miss Daniel, do you need more time and did not produce the evidence when you had your hearing? Uh, I didn't receive anything in the mail to show me that I only had 21 days. Normally, I, I had a, they told me I had to do a change of address. For me to get mail so i'm like okay so i did that and then i was like okay now i can bring the evidence it's like no you have to sign a motion or ask for more time i was like oh okay this this is a referee hearing isn't it uh, this is this is to bring evidence to the uh trial okay hold on yeah miss woodard is this set for the referee no this is a trial it's a dm trial there was a case scheduling order entered on May 29th, discovery until July 1st, mediation in July with a settlement conference in August. Okay. Well, Miss or Miss Daniel, you've missed the uh, deadlines by a long shot. This isn't close. So uh, the case scheduling order was from May 29th. It told you in that case scheduling order that you had the 21 days from the date of the first mediation that occurred in July, and you haven't complied. You're now well over two months past the deadline. You could have filed any time in May from May on. So why should the court give you more time when you you haven't basically done anything in four months? Because like I said, I didn't get the notice in the mail. So that's why if I would have got it, I you get what already had the evidence. Because I have everything right now. Okay, let me ask Mr. Daniel. Mr. Daniel, do you oppose uh, more time to provide evidence in this matter? I oppose. Okay. It's done. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is, again, those orders uh are again put in place and at the time that we had the scheduling conference we informed you that there would be dates that you had to comply with in the order and we stated at that time that if you didn't comply with those it would have uh could have uh, consequences to your case and you haven't complied and you would have gotten that again you would have got that order sometime in early june and now we're ordering on uh october so the court is going to deny your motion for additional time. You can testify yourself in this uh, particular matter, but as it relates to anything else that you should have produced, the court is going to deny that at this point. So that will be the order of the court. Mr. Daniel, you'll have to do an order denying her motion for additional time to present evidence. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yep. you. You're free to go. Have a good day. You too.